Hello friends. In today's session, we will learn how we can calculate modulus of negative numbers in Python. We will be diving deep into some of the mathematical concepts in order to understand how to calculate the modulus. If you are not comfortable with maths, please feel free to skip this session because we will be diving deep in mathematics. It is only for those who are curious in order to understand how to calculate modulus of negative numbers in Python. Earlier we have discussed that the modulus between two numbers is equal to the remainder of their division. So if we want to find modulus between two numbers, we can find the remainder of their division. We also learned that how we can calculate modulus of two positive numbers. Let's find out 89 modulus 6. We know that the result of this modulus operation is equal to the remainder of their division. Let's find out the remainder. So I will divide 89 with 6. 6 times 1 will be 6. If I subtract 6 from 8, I will get 2. This 9 will come down. 6 times 4 will be 24. If we subtract them, we will get 5. So we are getting 5 as a reminder. Hence, the result of this modulus operation will be 5. Remember, as we discussed, the result of modulus operation between two numbers is equal to the remainder of their division. Now, if I run the program, you can see we are getting 5. Notice, here we are performing modulus operation between two numbers. What we can also do is, we can create some variables, assign these values to them and perform modulus operation with these variables. So I will create some variables. Suppose dividend is 89 and divisor is 6. Now let's perform modulus operation with this variable. So dividend modulus divisor. So I have created some variables, assigned some values to them and I am performing modulus operation with these variables. Now dividend is storing 89 and divisor it is storing 6. Now if we run the program, notice we are getting the same output. Here both our dividend and divisor they are positive. Dividend is positive as well as divisor is also positive. Here we are performing modulus operation with positive numbers and that's why life is very simple. But now we will perform modulus operation with negative numbers and it will become even more interesting. Now let's consider the scenario where our dividend is negative but our divisor it is positive. So our dividend is negative and our divisor it is positive. Suppose dividend is minus 7 and let the divisor be 3. So now let's find minus 7 modulo 3. So when we perform minus 7 modulo 3, the result will be same as the remainder when we divide minus 7 with 3. Let's divide minus 7 with 3. In order to perform this division, we will need the number line. At the very center, we have 0. As we move towards right side, the numbers keep on increasing. This number line has no end to it. That's why we use infinity at the very right hand side. Similarly, if we move towards left hand side, the numbers keep on decreasing. And at the very left hand side, we represent it with negative infinity. Because on the left hand side, the numbers are negative. And that's why we use negative infinity. Notice we have minus 7 here which is negative. So we have to take a negative quotient here. So when we multiply both of them we will get a negative number and when we flip the sign it will become positive hence we can perform subtraction. Now 3 times minus 2 will give us minus 6. 3 times minus 1 will give us minus 3 and 3 times minus 3 will give us minus 9. You will notice minus 3 and minus 2 are both very close to minus 7. Now which one to choose among them? In Python, we 
choose a number that is more close to negative infinity. Bear with me, later in this video we will understand why we choose a quotient that is more close to negative infinity. Since minus 3 is more close to negative infinity, we will choose minus 3. 3 times minus 3 will give us minus 9. And now we will flip the sign. So when we subtract 7 from 9, we will get 2 as a reminder. So the result of this modulus operation will be 2. Now if we run the program, you can see we are getting 2 as a reminder. Let's consider another scenario where our dividend is positive but our divisor it is negative. So our dividend it will be negative but our divisor it will be positive. Suppose the dividend is 19 and the divisor it is minus 4. Let's find the result of 19 modulus minus 4. When we perform 19 modulus minus 4, the result will equal to the remainder when we divide 19 with minus 4. Let's divide 19 with minus 4. In order to perform this division, we will require the number line to visualize the division. Notice here 19 is positive, so we will require a quotient that is negative. Hence when we multiply it with minus 4, we will get a positive number. Then we can flip the sign and perform the subtraction. Minus 4 times minus 3 will give us 12. Minus 4 times minus 4 will give us 16. Minus 4 times minus 5 will give us 20. Now among these three, minus 5 and minus 4, they will give the number which is more close to 19. But notice, since minus 5 is more close to negative infinity, we will consider minus 5. So I will take minus 5, 4 times minus 5 will give us 20. Now we will flip the sign, it will become minus 20. So when we perform the subtraction, we will get minus 1. So, 19 modulus minus 4 will equal to minus 1. Now, if we run the program, you can see we are getting minus 1 as the result. This time, let's consider the scenario where both our dividend and divisor, they are negative. So, our dividend is negative this time as well as our divisor. Suppose the dividend is minus 59 and the divisor is minus 7. Let's find the result when we perform minus 59 modulo minus 7. So let's divide minus 59 with minus 7. We will need the number line in order to visualize their division. Now notice minus 59 is a negative number. So we have to choose a positive quotient. So when we multiply it with minus 7, we will get a negative number. Then we can flip the sign and perform subtraction. Minus 7 times 7 will give us minus 49. Minus 7 times 8 will give us minus 56. Minus 7 times 9 will give us minus 63. Now, 8 and 9 are more closer to minus 59. They will, gi they will give us more closer result towards minus 59. But notice 8 is more close to negative infinity. Hence we will consider 8 as the quotient. Now minus 7 times 8 will give us minus 56. Now we will flip the sign and perform subtraction. So 56 minus 59 will give us minus 3 as a reminder. So the result of this operation will be minus 3. Now if we run the program, you can see we are getting minus 3 as a result. Let us understand why in Python we round the result towards negative infinity. Suppose here we have our number line. The result of modulus operation is pretty simple for positive numbers. But when we deal with negative numbers, we have two choices. Either we 
can round the quotient towards zero or we can round the quotient towards negative infinity well in programming languages like c and c++ we round the result towards zero but in python we round the result towards negative infinity well this is because guido van rossum he decided that if we round the result towards negative infinity then there will be more use cases for modulus operator since guido van rossum decided to choose to round the result towards negative infinity hence we choose the quotient which is more close to negative infinity in this article guido van rossum he has explained that in python why we are rounding the result towards negative infinity instead of rounding towards zero here guido has given a scenario where he thinks that rounding the result towards negative infinity is more beneficial than rounding the result towards zero he has mentioned that suppose we are writing a program to store date and time in python we use this posix timestamp to store date and time posix is nothing but epoch time it measures the time in seconds that has elapsed since 1970 suppose in one day we have 86400 seconds so if we want to store the date and time that is before 1970 we can represent them in negative numbers and if we want to find the time of the day what we can do is we can perform modulo with 86400 it will give us the time of the day let me simplify this with an example suppose today is a very special day for you so let's represent the time in zero one day later 24 hours will be elapsed two days later 48 hours will be elapsed similarly if we want to store the date before today we can represent them in negative number so before one day before the time will be minus 24 hours two day before the time will be minus 48 hours suppose we have a time here minus 36 let's try to find what was the time on the clock so what we can do is we can take minus 36 we can perform modulo with 24 now the result of modulo operation will equal to the remainder of the division so i will divide minus 36 with 24 24 times minus 1 will give us minus 24 24 times minus 2 will give us minus 48 but since minus 2 is more close to negative infinity hence we will take minus 2 here it will give us minus 48 now let's flip the sign 48 minus 36 it will give us 12 so it was 12 pm on the clock but here instead of rounding the result towards negative infinity if we round the result towards zero we will take minus 1 here which will give us a negative number that's why guido van rossum suggested if we round the result towards negative infinity there will be more use cases for modulo operator hence when we perform modulus operation in python we always round the result towards negative infinity but in programming languages like c and c++ we always round the result towards zero